What is up guys? So today we're gonna work on the 370Z. As you can see, I have it taken apart. So I already took it, um, the wheel off and all that stuff. If um, you wanna know how to get this stuff off and um, get the caliper off, uh, check out my other installation video on when I installed the big brake kit. But today we're gonna take off these um, brake guards. So or the dust covers, dust shields, uh, heat shields. Um, they have multiple names for them. Uh, same function and everything. We're gonna get rid of this because uh, on the install, when I first installed them, we uh, bent these to be uh, flat and I didn't like the way I bent them. Uh, so save yourself the trouble, buy new ones or just replace them. And it's simple as that. So first of all, uh, if you watch my other video on how to install the brakes and the big brake kit and uh, take it off Once you're at this point uh, Of course you got to take this uh, nut off which holds the brake line uh, But on this back side you're you got four bolts So one right here one right there and two up on the top and what you're gonna use is the number 17 to get the, these bolts off uh, I've replaced my um, my wheel bearing uh, on the G35 before so I mean I'm f familiar on how this works uh, but those bolts on the back side hold this whole unit together and um, yeah so once you take that off your dust shield will fall right off get rid of that so if you're installing those big brake kits um, just do it ahead of time and save you the headache um, so let's get to taking this off and go from there remember by rotating your wheel to the right and to the left it'll allow you to have access to these um, bolts a lot easier than if you were to have it straight because there basically will be no way to take that off or get to it um, because the sockets are so big so I took those bolts out on the side uh, these two front ones since it's tilted this way so now I gotta turn it back inward and get the other two out so the way you do that is when you open up the vehicle, as long as you got the uh, the uh, key on you, you're able to turn the steering wheel. So it's like you, your steering, when you uh, unlock it, it basically allows this wheel to turn free. It's a, actually a lot easier than I thought it would be for rotating this. So, turn it all the way that way. And then as you can see, it rotated it. So, let's get the other two out and pull this off. So, after you take out the last bolt, uh, everything should just come right off, so. Last bolt. And that's the wheel bearing. So it's all as a unit, so that's pretty cool. And then this came off. Uh, be careful because this is the sensor here, uh, your wheel speed sensor. So I'll put that back in and uh, remount everything up. So clean out the area that this goes in, just so that way it goes in a lot easier. And then if you look up close, there's like a little lip right here. So it um your wheel bearing just pushes all the way up in there and holds itself so that's how that so goes as you in can there. see there's a little lip right here and then a little sensor you want to make sure that you take this off so that way you don't damage it upon installing the wheel bearing again 
uh, remember which way it goes. So the flat where it has these uh, notches faces inward. And then you have, of course, this end of it, which is a cap. And uh, that sensor goes in between here. There's an arrow. I believe the arrow is supposed to be facing up. Yes, it's supposed to face upward. So that's the arrow faces up uh, because of the angle of these notches. And then that sits in there like that. So make sure you take out all the dirt out of here so it's easier to put the, the bearing back in. So what I ended up doing to get this back on was using the rubber mallet and uh, facing it down like that, tapping on the back of this. So that way the arrow's in between these two uh, screw ports. So when you put it in, everything stays together as a unit. Okay, so I smashed my hand, um, basically tightening up the, the four bolts, the two on this side. There's a cotter pin on this back side here. So right in here. And uh, when I was tightening up the bolts over here, I pushed down, the socket slipped, and my hand went into that cotter pin. Uh, and it dug a big hole out of my hand. Uh, I may put some pictures up of what it looks like. But it was um, a small incision, but it was deep. So it's like you could see like a small little sliver from the thickness of the cotter pin. But it went really deep. So I'm uh, working with one hand right now. Uh, so be careful of that when you're tightening stuff. Use a cheater bar or a breaker bar. So that way you could get leverage on it without being so close to here. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is these little tabs here are facing upward and what I did was I took some pliers and I bent them flat so that way it doesn't cut into my line. You could chop them off. I just bent them flat so if ever I sell the car or somebody else uh, puts the stock brakes back on or I do for some odd reason, uh, everything, the original mounting hardware is still there. Okay, so what I decided I'm gonna end up doing is cutting the uh, dust shield off with the die grinder. So the die grinder, just cut it off. Uh, Dremel, whatever you have, 10 snips will work too. Um, and go around the border this way. The reason why I'm gonna cut it instead of taking off the rear is because you gotta remove all this junk in here. And I believe you gotta take off this uh, nut here, which I believe is a 32 millimeter and then once you get this off you got to loosen up the bolts from the back side and there's some other crap here like this basically that's in the way and when you start taking out the bolts um, you can't get a socket in there so I mean it's just too much work and uh, and in doing so um, I believe this will come off as well uh, this back plate for your uh, park brake. Your best bet is to either buy new ones and replace them or just cut it where it's flush and leave this uh, plate here. Because I think these are spot welded to this or crimped onto there. So let's get to it and finish it up. So this is what it should look like after you die grind it. Use the die grinder wheel and kind of uh, round the edges so that way it's concentric with that plate. Now it's out of the way. Uh, you could use a deburring tool and deburr it um, and then put your stuff back together the same way you took it off. If you want to know how I took off the caliper and stuff, watch my other video and it shows you how I uh, take off the OEM brake calipers and install the big brake kit and put it back together um, so the same concept will apply for the big brake kit so watch that video. well guys that's going to conclude today's video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up that's greatly appreciated it makes me know that you guys are watching and uh, liking the videos I'm putting out um, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button um, and that's going to conclude today's video 
So as you can see, you can't really see a difference because it's on the internal. Um, but that being said, see you in the next one.